Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's see if we can figure out the coordinate system of the celestial sphere. And the two coordinates that we need to use is what we call the angle of declination and the right ascension. And most objects in the universe, such as famous and bright stars, Sirius, Betelgeuse, Pollux, and so forth, are indicated as their position being at some right ascension and some angle of declination. So we're going to start with the easy one, the angle of declination. And that is very similar to, in the Earth's coordinate system, the latitude on the Earth. It's the height above or below the equator in terms of degrees. So that can be anywhere from 0 to 90 degrees above the equator, from 0 to 90 degrees below the equator. So just like we have the celestial sphere uh, in sync with the Earth's coordinate system, notice that the pole is directly below what we call the celestial north pole, the south pole is directly uh, below the celestial south pole, the equator around the Earth, the plane that goes through the Earth at the equator is then the, called the celestial equator, which divides the universe in the northern half and the southern half relative to the Earth. So anything that is above the celestial equator will have a positive, as we call angle of declination. Anything that's below the celestial equator will have a negative number, a negative angle uh, for the uh, angle of declination. So that I've indicated that right there. So now, of course, we're going to be observing things from some position on the Earth. I happen to live very near, uh, 34 degrees north of the equator, near Los Angeles. And so therefore, the angle of declination from my position it's 30 to 34 degrees north of the equator. So now when we go over here, notice Sirius is at a position minus 16 degrees. That means it's actually in the southern portion of the celestial sphere below the equator line, below the plane of the equator, the, the celestial equator. Betelgeuse is 7 degrees above. Pollux is 28 degrees above. Vega, 38 degrees. Arcturus, 19 degrees. Aldebaran, 16 degrees. Capella, 46 degrees, and Alpha Centauri, the brightest star in the sky, which, no, it's not the brightest, it's the closest. The brightest is, um, where did, I don't have it on here. Oh yeah, there it is, Sirius. The brightest star is Sirius. Alpha Centauri is one of the brightest, about the fourth brightest, and, but it is the closest. It's at minus 60 degrees. So where should, you, where should we be looking, of course, at different times of the night and at different times of the year. They're going to be in different positions relative to the rotation of the Earth and relative to the Earth revolving around the Sun. But at some point, once every 24 hours, that star will pass through the meridian, through the line that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole and through the point directly above our head, which is called the zenith. So once per 24 hours, any one of those stars, any constellation will go through that meridian. And so, if we're at the moment that it goes to the meridian, whatever it may happen to be, 2 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at night, whatever it may be, where will it be? Do I need to look directly upward? Do I need to look towards the horizon? Do I need to look in the other direction? Where should I look? Well, that depends on the angle of declination. Now, if the star or the constellation is at 34 degrees north, so plus 34 degrees, since I'm already at 34 degrees north of the equator, I would then have to look straight up. But where should I look if it's greater than 34 degrees? Where should I look if it's less than 34 degrees? Well, if it's greater than 34 degrees, that means it's closer to the North Pole than I am, so I have to look in a northerly direction. For example, if I'm at 34 degrees north and another star is at 44 degrees north, plus 44 degrees, that means it'll be at some location over here at 44 degrees north of the equator, which means it's 10 degrees further north than where I am at. So instead of looking straight up at the zenith, I need to look at a position 10 degrees away from the zenith. Remember that the zenith is straight up in any direction down to the horizon, no matter which I'm looking, is an angle from 0 to 90 degrees, an angle from 0 to 90 degrees and so forth. So that means if it's at 44 degrees, it's 10 degrees away, 10 degrees closer to the north. So I face the north. For me, north is in that direction. Straight up is the zenith, 10 degrees would be a 10 degree angle, I'll be looking for it over there. If a star is at the North Pole, which is at 90 degrees, for example Polaris, well that is at an angle of 90 minus 34, which is 56, 56 degrees. 
So if I add 56 to this, I get 90. So for me to find Polaris, the North Star, I have to look at an angle of 56 degrees away from the zenith. The zenith is directly above me. 56 degrees, we'll put it right over there. That's where I should be looking for the North Star. What about for a star directly above the equator? Where should I be looking if a star is right here, directly above the equator? Well, that's south of me. How many degrees? Well, that's 34 degrees south of me, so I have to turn around. South for me is in that direction. The zenith is straight up, and then I would look at an angle 34 degrees away from directly north. Remember, 34 degrees is a little bit more than one-third from directly north to the horizon, so I'll look at about an angle about this big and be looking for it in that direction. But of course, that would only be at one time, either during the daytime or the nighttime. And of course, if it happens in the daytime, I'm out of luck. If it happens at nighttime, I have to wait until it appears near, near the meridian. I'll look for it in that angle. At the next video, we'll figure out how to look for it at different times of night, depending upon where it will be relative to the, to the longitude, not the latitude. Of course, longitude in the celestial sphere is called the right ascension, and we'll talk, tell you about how, how to look for it there. But a general approach as to how to look for stars as far as where the position will be relative to the equator, rel relative to the North Pole, or relative to the South Pole, we use this principle right here. Where to look? We look for the angle of declination, which is right here. This is the angle of declination. So angle of declination. This is right ascension, as we call it. And so we look for the angle of declination, and we subtract from that the position of where we're at, and we should be able to look for that star there. So let's try a couple. Let's look for Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. So where to look? We take the angle of declination, which is minus 16 degrees, 42 minutes, but I'll just go ahead and round it off or just take the minutes only. Uh, I should say the degrees only. So minus 16 degrees minus the position I'm at, and I'm at 34 degrees. So minus 16 minus 34 is equal to minus 50 degrees. Now remember, 45 degrees is halfway between the zenith and the horizon. So 50 degrees is a little bit more, a little bit further down from the halfway point. Negative means I have to go look towards the south and 50 degrees below the point directly above me. So in that direction right there. So if I look for, if I want to look for, for uh, Sirius, I have to look towards the south at a 50 degree angle below the point directly above me. Or 4 degrees up from the horizon, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, let's take the next one. Betelgeuse is that big red giant in the constellation of Orion, and it's at 7 degrees above the equator, so I use my, my equation, plus 7 degrees minus 34 degrees, that's the location where I'm at, is equal to minus 27 degrees. So I'm looking for Betelgeuse at an angle of minus 27 degrees, so it looks straight up, then I go 27 degrees this way, looking towards the south because it's negative, it's close to the equator. So I look 27 degrees away from the point directly above me. Let's try one more. How about Pollux? Pollux is one of the bright stars, probably the brightest star in Gemini, the twin, and it's at 28 degrees. So I go plus 28, minus 34 degrees, which is minus 6 degrees. That's only 6 degrees towards the south from where I'm standing. Six degrees, that's a very small angle, so Pollux will pass almost directly overhead if I'm looking at the night sky at the right time of the day, at night, and at the right time of the year. One more. How about Alpha Centauri? Well, it's at minus 60. Wow. If I use my equation, so I take where to look, the angle of declination would be minus 60, and I subtract from that my position is minus 34, which is minus 94. That's more than 90 degrees. That's past the horizon. So from where I'm standing, near Los Angeles, if I want to see Alpha Centauri, I'm out of luck. Because, first of all, it's minus, so I have to look towards the south. 94 degrees, so the zenith is up there. 94 degrees puts it past the horizon. There's no way that I can see Alpha Centauri from where I'm standing. I'd have to travel south, maybe towards the southern Mexico, or towards... Uh, South America or the Panama Canal or something before I can start looking for the star Alpha Centauri. So that's how we use the con concept of angle of declination to find the stars. In the next video, we'll attack the concept of right ascension and figuring out when I should go out. So in the case of um, angle of declination, it's kind of where to look relative to the equator, the North Pole, the zenith directly above us. 
but the right ascension will tell you when to look for it, what time of the year, what time of the night, based upon the position relative to some strange starting point. And we'll see how that works on the next video.